Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at the G.I. Joe Classified series Fireteam 7883 pack with the His Officer, Range, Viper and Infantry. Please like, share, comment, subscribe or even hit the super thanks button. I do appreciate all engagement on my channel. I do believe this 3 pack is an exclusive to Pulse and the fact that it's out right now has got me really excited for the His tank that's coming out soon as well. The whole box has a red and black color scheme very much like the His tank. And the artwork on the front is very eye-catching. And the three of them look really sinister. At the top of the box, we do have the G.I. Joe logo and the special logo for this Cobra team. Down to the bottom of the box, we have the same product information. And down to the side, of course, that Cobra His logo and also numbered 788. Just like the His tank. And on the back, Schematics for the figures, all of their accessories, and a whole bunch of firepower effects on the bottom. Finally, onto that last side of the box. It is a condensed version of all the three characters from the front of the box. So let's go ahead and get this one open. The three figures are held in place on this cardboard insert. The cardboard insert is placed inside the box on top of this ammunition box that holds all their weapons. And inside the box, we have three separate bags holding the weapons and the fact parts. We're first looking at the Cobra officer's weapons and he comes with a small dagger and a pistol cast in a black plastic. The dagger does have some silver paint for the blade and that has a nice shine to it. He holds the dagger and the pistol just fine in his hands. Pistol also stores away nicely on that holster on the right side of his belt. While the dagger slots into the sheath on his left thigh, but it looks a little strange because this was designed for a much larger dagger that came with the mainline Cobra officer. So it looks a little strange to have such a small little dagger fit into a much larger sheath. His helmet is cast in a red plastic, nice glossy black paint that clearly outlines his rank on the front of the helmet. Same glossy black finish all over this panel on the rest of the helmet. And on the left side, a very striking 788 that looks really sharp and it's got a nice gradient to it as well. Also coming with a grey rifle holder, texture sculpted on it to look like leather and there's a Cobra logo. Comes with a peg where it attaches to his back. The helmet sits snugly on his head and you can see that all the gear from his helmet to his webbing, belt and sheath are all reused from the Cobra officer. The rifle holder on his back is also the same exact sculpt and design. I also like this larger automatic pistol. Very retro and reminds me of the old 80s G.I. Joe weapons. Cool geeky details like the scope on top and the very long barrel as well as the removable magazine. He also holds this weapon nicely in both of his hands. And even though the rifle holder on his back was meant to be for the original Cobra officer's weapons, this pistol does sit quite nicely in that rifle holder. And finally he comes with a more modern looking rifle. This one is also cast in a black plastic with detail like that grenade launcher at the bottom and also a removable magazine. And of course also holding this rifle just fine in both of his hands. He does have a pocket on his belt for you to store away that magazine. But the rifle holder doesn't hold on to this rifle very well. It kind of stays stuck and sticks out a little too high above his head. So I don't really like the way it looks. You do have the option but I wouldn't recommend it. Now we're having a look at the sculpt and paint of the figure itself and as I mentioned, most of the gear on his body is reused from the regular Cobra officer. The key difference is that he's now missing that rank on the left sleeve and also his forearms are from the regular Cobra Trooper. And yes, his torso is also from the Cobra Trooper. I do want to also point out the way that his legs are sculpted. It's quite clear that this mold has been reused a couple of times. So there's probably a little bit of mold degradation in the molding of the hip belt joints. So the sockets are kind of wonky and this ends up with his legs in a very unnatural spread as compared to the previous releases of the Cobra Officer and Trooper. It bugs me quite a bit. The stance is really unnatural and I'll show you how to fix it later on. Let's take a closer look at his painted details. And I already mentioned that the helmet looks fantastic. However, it does look a little odd because of the glossy black not matching any of the other blacks on his body. Removing that helmet, we see that his head is cast in a black plastic, grey for the cloth mask, and he's got sharp paints for his face as well. Interestingly, this time with blue eyes, giving him a little bit of that pretty boy look. 
The red for the Cobra logo and his collar on his torso once again also stands out really nicely against the blacks. He's got red plastic for the belt and the webbing, with black on the top. I do really like how his arms are executed, with a special His Unit logo over here. Very sharp and you can actually see their tagline as well. Grey paint for the straps on his forearm armor that's also painted in red. We get down to his hands, he's got those armor also painted in red and it stands out nicely against the grey plastic. Not much paints on his legs but there's red for his knee pad and some hits of black for the buckles on his boots. So overall, he's quite a simple colour scheme and paint job. And I'll say the best part of this figure is, of course, his helmet and that very nice his logo on his right shoulder. So what I did to correct those wonky hips on this figure, I heated up those legs with a hair dryer and popped them out. And then I shaved off that much plastic from the bottom of that ball jointed socket. More plastic on the right side because his right leg was sticking out further and then just this much on the left side. So now I'm going to heat those two hips and pop them back on to see what it looks like. And here he is after I heated up his legs and popped them back on. He can now have his legs closer together standing in a more natural stance, much like the previous releases. And there's also a clear improvement compared to the original state. And besides those wonky looking hips, the hinges in his wrists also feel got me and stiff at the same time if that makes any sense. Again, I think it's mold degradation, possibly a lack of quality control and maybe some of the plastic is starting to fuse. So these two joints are problematic and I also observed that on the Python Patrol officer in my previous review. So I really hope this doesn't become a recurring theme across all the characters to come using this same body mold. Now we're moving on to the Range Viper and he comes with a red plastic scarf as well as a belt of bullets. This belt is cast in a gold looking plastic with a bronze colored paints for the chain links. He also comes with a dagger and a pistol with an extended magazine. Both of these are cast in a black plastic. Slipping the scarf and the bullet belt onto his torso with him holding that dagger and pistol just fine in his hands. We're also able to slip that dagger into that loop on his belt and the pistol onto the holster on his right thigh. I love his semi-automatic grenade launcher that's also cast in a black plastic with cool details like the scope and the butt, and the grenade rounds also rotate in that drum in the middle. Easy enough to pose holding the grenade launcher with both hands as well. He also comes with a pickaxe, and this one is cast in a black plastic. Also holding this axe just fine in his hands, his backpack is cast in a dark grey plastic with nice paint applications, a bit of the gold for some bullets mounted on the back, and that red for the indicator on the bottom, cool detail like pouches down the sides, a little radio device on the left, and a gas tank at the top with a pipe. The backpack's got a little rectangular peg on the right side, and you can put that axe onto it. On the inside of the backpack there's also a little cubby over there for you to store his grenade launcher. The peg on the backpack also goes in just very snugly into his top of his back. And we just gotta connect this pipe to that hole on the back of his helmet. And finally he's got a black machine gun. This one has nice detail like the scope as well as the removable box of ammunition. The bullets themselves are also painted with that gold colored paint. And of course he holds on to his machine gun just fine. So all his accessories and sculpting are completely brought over from the regular line Range Viper, which remains one of my favorite Cobra Troop Builders, thanks to all the colors and accessories. So once again having them in a different colorway, with the more sinister reds and blacks for the His Fire team, makes me appreciate once again all that nice sculpting and accessories in a different colorway. So despite this figure looking a little muted, there's still a lot of painted details all over the very nice sculpting to look out for. While his head is cast in a black plastic, it's noteworthy that there is a layer of glossy black paint on his face and that really makes it stand out. The bright red paints in his eyes and his nose, as well as the sides of his cheeks, also really look like it's glowing compared to the slightly darker red paint on the sides of his helmet. We still have grey paint for that brain pattern on the top of the helmet as well. And not to mention a little bit of that liner just below his eyes. I'm slightly annoyed by that grey paint over here that seems to have run out from just under his eye so that's a little annoying. This time his gear on his torso is cast in a dark red plastic. And I do have to point out the brighter red paint that's applied to the pouches on the front as well as the straps on his shoulders. So the different shades of red over here 
makes the gear look interesting. Just like the tan paint that's applied on the original. Just above those pouches we have the special Cobra his logo. Very sharp once more, so that's very nice. On his left arm, we've got that 788 logo instead of the Cobra one on the original. And also nice sharp paint applications for the wristwatch. Not much other paint to speak of on the back of the figure, just like on the original, but we do have an additional hit. Over here on his right shoulder, once more with the model for the his troops. Definitely adding a lot of character even though this is just a repaint. The gear on his thighs are now cast in a red plastic, with a dark grey paint for the pouches. And this provides a lot of contrast just like on the original. Darker grey paint also for his knee pads. But his boots definitely look a little more boring compared to the two tones of grey on the original. Because this one is just a complete black plastic. The scheme of articulation remains the same as the original figure. However, I did notice that there is slightly reduced range in the, his neck looking upwards. So compared to the original, you can see that there is reduced range. And you can see that when I pop the two heads off, the original range viper pops off at the ball joint at the neck. But this one, the dumbbell joint actually stays in because of a smaller socket on that neck. And for me, I do really want to get that range back, so I just used a hobby knife and clipped off this C-shaped piece of plastic from the back of the neck. We can move the peg much further back for him to look up better. Popping his head back on, and now we check out that upward range, and I'm satisfied with the outcome. Finally, we're taking a look at the accessories that come with the His Infantry. So he's got a helmet that is cast in a black plastic. You can see the flat properties of the material on the inside, but with a nice glossy black finish on the top. It's got red paint for the panel that goes all the way down the sides as well as the front. And I also like that 788 paintwork over here. And he's got a nice bit of gradient as well. Popping onto the head of the infantry, just nice. He comes with a backpack and several rocket rounds. These are all cast in a grey plastic. The backpack has details like that big pouch on the back. And four slots for you to fit the four rocket rounds. The backpack has a peg that goes into the hole on the top of his back, like so. So he can hold on to all his rounds. He also comes with a rocket launcher and this is cast in a grey plastic. With red paint for the canvas. Cushion that's on both sides of the rocket launcher. The back does rotate out for you to simulate how he's loading his rocket launcher by sliding that round in. Or also posing with that round down the front when the weapon is locked and loaded. I love the way he's holding on to his rocket launcher. And I do think this is the first time that we're getting an anti-tank Cobra Trooper in the G.I. Joe 6 inch classified line. So I'm starting to like this guy the most out of this 3 pack. And you can also hook up that rocket launcher to those two hooks at the bottom of his backpack. Of course, his weapons are actually reused from the G.I. Joe Bazooka action figure, but I think this is a good case of very nice reuse because now we have an anti-tank trooper among the his tank fire team. The actual infantry figure is a complete reuse from the regular line infantry trooper, while his vest is reused from the commando snake eyes that came with Timber. And while he's made of completely reused parts, I would say his color scheme and little bit of that painted detail really brings out the uniqueness of this character and makes him interesting to look at. And also despite him being a complete reuse of the mole from the Cobra Trooper or Infantry, and they all share the same legs with the officer, he doesn't have the same wonky hip issue that came with the officer. So I really think that the mole being used for the officer is definitely having some bit of degradation resulting in those wonky hips. Even though we've seen this head sculpt so many times, I do like the way that it's being painted over here. The base is a black plastic but there's a very nice glossy black finish on that mask. And it also has a bit of grey accenting to bring out all that nice sculpting. For usual, the paint is also nicely applied on the parts of his face that you can see. And there's also red paint for the panels that go over his head as well as the sides. The rest of his body is cast in the black plastic with red paints. And I do like that there's more of the red paint on his body now on all of the textured panels. And this makes him also stand out from the rest of his crew. The Cobra logo is also now painted in black instead of red unlike the rest of his crew. And while the vest looks like it's grey plastic, the pouches on the front as well as the grenade are painted in a darker shade of grey to provide that contrast. 
we see more of that nice red paint down his arms but I have to point out the nice glossy black finish on that armor plate on the outside of his forearm as well as the glossy black paints on the armor plates on his hands that look really nice even down to this little bit of detail just below his thumb. So this is a very interesting figure to look at. More of that nice red paint for the panel down the side of his leg. And we have once again glossy black paint for his armor pads on his knees as well as his shins and the top of his boot. So the contrast and finish especially on his shoe looks really nice. So overall despite a general black and red color scheme, all the little color differences like the greys on his combat vest and the differences in finish like the glossy black paint really makes this figure stand out from the rest of his crew and topping off with that glossy black helmet. I feel like this guy's color scheme and paints are the strongest among his crew. And now that we have taken a look at the whole team and put them together, let's have a look at the effect parts that they come with. These bunch of effect parts over here are reused from the Viper 3 pack and I think also the Valkyrie 2 pack. While these two bigger blast effects are from Scrap Iron. There's white paint applied on a couple of effect parts over here for a little bit of that smokiness. While these effect parts over here are cast in a light blue translucent plastic with a darker blue paint for a bit of the color fade. I don't know if Cobra has blue laser weapons but it's a bit strange to have blue blast effects. And because these are blue you can't actually use them with the other larger orange blast effects over here. So for example plugging them together would be looking a little weird. And finally these two larger blast effects are cast in a translucent red plastic with white paint for the smoke effects at the back. So if you have those previous releases of these effect parts you would know how they work. I'm just showing a couple of selected parts on these figures and also to show a little bit of how you can pose them with their weapons and effects. I do really like how you can pose the infantry with this gigantic blast effect and he looks really cool just launching that rocket onto his target. But I also like to point out that the effect part is quite heavy and you would see a little bit of sag coming from the slightly gummy rocket launcher. So I don't think you can actually hold this pose for too long. So I don't think you can actually hold this pose for too long on your shelf. For size they all stand at about six and a quarter inches and that's about 16 centimeters with the range trooper just a couple of millimeters taller than the officer and infantry. For comparisons, in keeping with the black and red color scheme, here they are with Destro and Baroness. With Snake Eyes and Shooter. And for comparisons with other lines, here they are with Marvel Legends Black Widow and Symbiote Spider-Man. This is a great exclusive item, albeit a little pricey. The red and black interpretation of three front Cobra troops is very eye-catching and I'm quite excited to put these guys with the upcoming His Tank. Although this 3 pack is not without its issues, especially on the officer, I can recommend this one and it's a no brainer if you're getting the his tank. Please like and share this video, let me know what you think in the comments below, subscribe to my channel or even hit the super thanks button. Thanks for watching, take care and stay safe.